Hey everybody, what's up? What's going on? Vitaly Dubin is here and I'm super pumped, super excited and blessed and honored to welcome this magnificent leader, this top marketing rock star, a top leader in our space, Kate McShay. She's a speaker, she's a trainer, she's a six-figure earner and get ready to take lots of notes because Kate is going to share with you her tips and tricks and secrets, how you can build a successful and profitable home business. Kate is helping thousands of people all over the world home business owners and entrepreneurs, how to generate leads online and how to make more sales. And just to let you know who is the kind of person that I am bringing here right now for the interview to showcase her story, to inspire you and to give you some really good golden nuggets. Just a couple of words about Kate McShay. Kate has generated over 30,000 leads leveraging video marketing and social media. She signed up over 937 members into her home business in less than nine months on complete autopilot. She went from zero to earning multiple six-figure income in less than 15 months. She won some, some of the most competitive affiliate contests, and I'm spoken to her uh, along with her husband, uh, Andrew McShay. They are both a, a power couple. Uh, they are helping each other. She has spoken on stage at major industry events. In fact, I met, I met Kate for the first time at uh, Live the Gym 5 annual event in Austin, Texas. She was speaking on stage there, inspiring hundreds and hundreds of people. Kate is an L5 global leader in Miley System Pro, which is the largest lead generation and traction marketing system online for home business entrepreneurs. She contributes a lot to this community. She, she, do a lot of, she does a lot of training and webinars and, and wake-up calls there. She's an author of multiple products like the Ultimate Video Cash Flow Machine, the Tube Traffic Formula, Facebook Video Traffic Code, and others, which I bought some of the products and they're absolutely amazing. And I can go on and on about, about Kate. She's incredible. I'm just super excited to bring her bring in for this interview, Kate. How are you doing? I'm doing great, Vitaly. How are you? I'm awesome, you know. I'm I'm ready to take my notes myself, you know, because because we 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 are going to get you know get you grilling a little bit with with what you are doing in your business, what's working now, you know, and uh, uh, I probably am, have not mentioned all of your credentials and results, so you know, uh, I'm just super blessed for 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 you being here. Oh, thank you. And I'm so appreciative for you reaching out because this is the kind of stuff that I love to do. Um, we've been able to see you um, when we met at Live the Dream. I know that you were just hungry. You were ready and you were ready for ready to move forward in your business. And just to be able to watch you behind the scenes go from where you were to where you are now for um, you know placing in the top 10 of one of the most competitive affiliate contests. I mean, this is the kind of stuff that that you guys get when you hang around with Vitalik. So you're in really, really good hands. And I was just excited to be able to come on here and uh, and help support you and help support your people in any way possible. Yeah, absolutely. And you, you won this affiliate contest yourself, you know, just writing a couple of emails. <laughs> it's so incredible. <laughs> I want to ask the, start this interview with you telling me a little bit about a little bit about your story, you know, how everything has started for you, Kate, you know, for you building your home business and what has driven you to succeed in this industry? Yeah, so for me, my story is a little interesting, um, and it's probably something that a lot of people can relate to, especially being in the home-based business industry. Um, I was a previous second grade teacher, and my husband and I really built the business together in the beginning. Uh, Andrew actually got into internet marketing and network marketing. Uh, before I did, about four years before I did, he's um, highly, highly successful at his job that he has right now. Um, and I was in a place where we were going to be moving across the country. I was not interested in anything that he had going on <laughs> upstairs as a part time job. Really loved my teaching job. However, I was at a crossroads. And it was, we were moving from New York, we were going to be moving to Portland, Oregon, and I had to decide what I was going to do. I would have to get recertified, I would have to start at the ground uh, level again at the new school I was going to be teaching at. I was planning on have, we were planning on having kids at some point uh, within the next year or two, and I had to really decide what I was passionate about. And honestly, I was losing the passion with what I was doing with teaching. I was getting to that point where I was burning out and I could identify that inside of myself. And right. so what ended up happening was Andrew really introduced me to the home-based business industry. He took mm -hmm. me to a live event and I was just amazed with the amount of positive people, forward-thinking people, and uh, people that were very similar to me. 
And I had never really felt that in any other kind of profession that I was ever in where I just could 100% relate to the other people that were there. And they were just so caring and wanting to see all of us be successful. So I made the commitment <laughs> that I would you know, take action and build a home business. And then I really didn't do much for about 12 months. I bought a ton of courses on a ton of different strategies and, and, and was very frustrated and angry with myself because I'm not a mediocre person. I never play at a mediocre level and I was. So my husband and I went back to the same event a year later uh, with the same results or if not less results and had to explain to some of the top leaders that we were starting to build relationships with because we were going to a bunch of events as to why we were still not seeing success. Yeah. So. Uh, long story short, we locked ourselves in our hotel room that night uh, on the Saturday night at that event, mapped out our 90 day blueprint and decided that video marketing was going to be our way to go and uh, and and hit the ground running and have never looked back since. And so that's the most valuable piece that you know I can share with you with regards to our story is that we just decided. And for me in the beginning, um, you know, I always had this vision of, I want to do this for my kids. I want to do this to, you know, give my husband the choice to retire if he ever wants to. He loves his job. He's not going to be leaving anytime soon. However, having the choice if anything were to ever happen would be critical. However, for me, one of the biggest things was being an impact to others and 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 feeling fulfilled myself, um, knowing that, you know, I stretched myself as far as possible and I wasn't doing that. And this is the way that I've been able to consistently over and over again, challenge myself. Absolutely. Yeah. I think there is no better industry to, to challenge yourself, to grow. There is no income ceiling. There is no growth ceiling. There is no contribution ceiling. And you, you're always and always growing. And, and like you said, you know, being in this, this kind of industry with positivity and everybody is, you know, uplifting, that's so awesome. And you know what? Every single one of the leaders that I interviewed said, I made a decision. I made a, made a true commitment. You know, I was just, I, I've had it, you know, I, 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 I've struggled enough. Enough is enough. I'm going to just put in a massive action and, and, and make it happen no matter what. Right. And I think that was happening for you when you just like went with and closed yourself with Andrew. You know, we're not going to back to this event. Let's, let's create the blueprint. Let's, Let's go into action mode <laughs> and you're like, exactly. like five videos per day or something. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And that's what we did is we had a plan of, oh, we'll shoot one to two videos per day um, for the next 90 days. And then we had such urgency and desire that we had a long, a long weekend um, in the U.S. and just said, you know what? forget this, we're going to do, we're going to shoot 30 videos in three days. And so we just banged out 10 videos per day and then gradually released them onto the internet. And you know, those, you, if you talk to any leader, every leader is going to tell you there was like one 90 day block that they committed to that totally drastically changed their business, which is really cool. And that's what happened for us. I wanted you to hear that because we are going to talk about video marketing, the importance of video, but sometimes people say, I cannot make it one video a day, you know, but you said three, 30 videos in, in three days, you know, it's yeah. absolutely possible. So just, just stretch your mind a little bit. What, what with your level of drive and commitment, what, what you can do. So I want to ask you, Kate, you know, what was real, what was your, your breakthrough, you know, your, your major turning point when, when you started finally seeing results and experience success online. Yeah. So, so a big turning point for me, um, and it was a little different because Andrew and I were building the business together. Andrew had a business background. Um, and I, for so long was telling myself so many self limiting beliefs, you know, well, I'm a second grade teacher. Who am I to train people on business? I, you know, don't have a marketing degree. I don't have any business background. And there are so many self-limiting beliefs that I was allowing myself to believe over and over and over again, even when we were starting to see some success. Um, so for me, what changed things for me and what started to drive me forward was number one, getting mentorship from other people who knew more than I already did and had the life that I wanted to have. So getting mentorship and then starting to see other people that I was teaching or training get results. I mean, that fired me up. Um, for a lot of people, it's it's identifying what is significant to you, what, what you value. And for me, 
being significant in someone else's life um, is, is a high, high value for me. And so once I started to see that what I was applying was not only obviously giving us results, but it was helping other people get results. And I was having people message me on Facebook, having people call me um, and just and email me and thank, thank me for what I was able to help them do with their life. That's what almost turned things around for me as a breakthrough because I knew that if I stopped contributing, if I stopped working hard, then I was also letting other people down. And so it wasn't just about me anymore. It wasn't just about my family. It was about who I was exposing to my message. And if I chose to shut that off, I was also stopping other people from being able to be successful, to leave their jobs, to be home with their kids. So that was a huge turning point for me. I stopped the self-limiting beliefs. I changed my routine. I changed how I was speaking to myself. And it made a huge, huge difference. Yeah, it's all it's all in the stories that we are telling you know ourselves that we cannot do this or we are not this type of person or you know all of this doubts and fears and self talk that goes goes on and when you when you stop that when you stop the excuses when you are just embrace your new identity you know that you are you are now uh, you know almost like a new person that that is you know forgetting about your your situation and just giving out you know giving to other people contributing to their lives and and not thinking about yourself but thinking about how you can make a difference and, and how you can give value i think that's what you're talking about you know exactly yep definitely 100 percent. absolutely so what are the the most important lessons that you learned kate like what are the biggest keys that you found to build your own business so a few different um few different things is that if I'm not growing, my business isn't growing. So being a consistent lifelong learner, which is something that I always knew um, and knew in my past you know, profession and knew in anything that I had ever done to be successful, but, but always consistently learning and knowing that um, you know, where I'm at right now is not going to help me get to the next level of where I want to be. And it's not going to help other people get to the next level of where they want to be. So consistently every single day doing something that's going to help me learn a new skill set, learn to enhance my skill set, learn to, you know, move and move my direction forward in a, in a different way where I want to go, where my vision is, um, is important. I would say that's the number one piece. Um, number two, again, would be mentorship. So finding somebody, and even if it's, you know, if you're watching this and and, you, and your finances are really tight, if it's just following someone online, if it's listening to their emails, if it's investing in one of their courses, if it's listening to, you know, one of their hangouts or podcasts, following someone that you, you connect with that has the life, has the business that you want, and then soaking up as much information from them as possible, and then implementing it. That's the critical second piece of it, right? Consuming what somebody else already knows and what, what they're teaching, but then also implementing it yourself. Um, and the last piece I would say is this is a people business and this is a networking business. No matter what you're doing, the more people that you can influence and that you can become connected with, the better. Um, so one thing that I identified in the beginning was being able to network with other top leaders. And that's critical. It's it's super huge because it, it's funny. Everybody thinks that everybody's businesses are separate, and we don't talk about business, and you know we don't share any information. But there's this feeling of openness to wanting to help each other out once you've started to really create some serious results. Where it doesn't come from an area of I need help. Tell me what to do. It's all about just sharing strategies with each other and little teeny tiny tweaks that you know, we know we can all give each other to help somebody move forward um, and get out of that, you know, out of that place of where they're, they plateaued a little bit and help them get to the next level. It's fun. We all like to do that. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And if you're like now, right, thinking to yourself, well, just show me, Kate, how I'm going to generate leads. Just show me how I'm going to make money. I'm telling you, you know, this is this is what the, the important stuff that we are talking about here. Uh, because without it, you know, nothing that we'll show you in, in regarding the strategies and stuff like that will help you. Because what Kate is talking about, investing in yourself, cannot agree more. You know, you, you gotta you gotta be learning, you gotta be studying. You know, you probably 
also invested tens of thousands of dollars, always seeking for for the the greatest uh, you know programs, courses, going to live events, hiring coaches, and you know uh, to get to the next level. There's always the next level, and and uh, absolutely agree with you. And I want to talk to you for a moment about vision because you mentioned it, it a couple you know a couple times. How how vision is really really important uh, in in success in this business. Yeah. So one thing that I always notice and here's here's how business is going to be here's how life is going to be um it's not moving forward all the time <laughs> that's one thing that i can say is that um naturally there are going to be moments where if if we are consistently trying to develop we're going to get into a place of where we plateau and where we stay stagnant and when that happens, what I've always noticed for me is that there's a lack of clarity. There's there's something um, that's missing. There's a piece of my vision that's missing. And so when I go back and I self check and I think about you know how I'm feeling, what I'm not producing, um, you know what I'm struggling with, it always comes back to well, where do I see myself going? And when my vision isn't clear, that's when I know I have to go back and reevaluate. Um, so for me. Vision, vision can come down to what I like to do is I like to think about what do I want, right? In the next 12 months, what do I really want? In the next two years, what do I really want? So if it's, you know, and I actually just went through this, um, this, this, uh, this lesson again last week, which is pretty cool. I just reevaluated some of my goals on, on what I want to hit within the next two years. But I always think about, okay, what do I want to do? Well, I want to travel. And then I get really specific about it. Okay, I want to go to Ireland and I want to go to France and I want to go to Italy. And I want to do that by you know 2016 in June. What else do I want to do? I want to buy a house. I want to buy a car, right? And I list out everything that's necessary. I want to have kids. Well, to have kids, you know, I have to start putting aside how much all of this is going to cost, okay? To start to quantify what um, what everything is going to cost, what I'm going to see specifically, if I want that house, what color are my doorknobs, what color are the walls going to be, what color are the hardwood floors going to be, you know, it's all dependent upon, you know, you and what you desire. Right. And then after you quantify that, after you actually put a, 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 a stamp, right, you put a, a price a price point on that on that vision of what you're looking for, then that's what comes down to, okay, so then how much do I have to make in my business in order to make this happen? How much do I have to make per year? How much do I have to make per month? How much do I have to make per week? And how much do I have to make per day? And it gets down to that. It, it, I like to, we call it reverse engineering. So we plan with the end in mind, right? And if you're really new, I would start with just planning out your next six months and I would plan it out um, as, again, not from a, I wanna make $50,000 in the next six months. I want you to think about where are you envisioning your life could be like in the next six months? What do you want your life to look like? And then put a price point to what you would need to do in order to achieve that, in order to buy that next car, okay? Then it comes down to that monthly, that weekly, that daily value. Have that post-it number, that, po that number on a post-it, Put it up on your computer and make sure that you're hitting that number every day. And if you're not, you need to find a way to close more people into your business, to generate more leads. And that's that's what creates that momentum. Without that, that vision and that understanding of what you really want, most people will sit back, which is what I did for a very long time, and stay comfortable. And that's one of the most difficult things to get out of is when you have a lack of clarity, how do you get yourself out of that comfort zone into an incredibly uncomfortable zone in order to change your life. I like how you talk about reverse engineering and, and thinking about your vision and then what kind of income you want to do every single day. And and when you when somebody will put on the on a stick note that my my hour is worth one hundred dollars per hour, it's kind of hard to go on YouTube and watch cat videos, you know, and get distracted by by Very different stuff and, and doing things, not profit producing activities. Hey, here's my vision. Here's what I need to be making every day. I'm not doing that. So probably I need to get to work. But I also think that that part of the vision is is not only what you want, you know, your why, travel, home, house, and, and stuff like that, and, and visualize your life, your lifestyle. Part of your vision, it should be, what are the type of person you want to become? Yes. You know? yep. and, 
this is this may be even more 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 critical part of your vision in, in, in yourself changing from the inside the type of person you want to become you know you're you want to be the type of person who will be invited for interviews will be invited to speak for on stages you know um, how how do you see yourself people talking about you what they say how they represent yourself and your brand so I, I think that should also be a, a very very important part when you think through who 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 do, who do you really want to become you know yeah yeah because when i look at top leaders um and that's such a great point vitality because you can have everything in the world that you want you can have the lifestyle that you want however if you're and pardon me but if you're a jerk right <laughs> then then at some point your vision is not going to go too far so if you're someone who really dramatically wants to make an impact in this world then you're going to have to develop into being somebody different and you're a hundred percent right that material stuff the the house the car those things are all great how the lifestyle is great however when you become a person of influence to somebody else that completely changes the game and when you're looking at you know where if, if you do network marketing online marketing affiliate marketing and you look at the top leaders that are in your space they're they're incredibly powerful people because they work on themselves and in order to have a high, high amount of success, you have to be, you have to become the person that you were always meant to be. Um, I think it was Jim Rohn who said it, that most people settle for what their life should be like by the age of 25, which mm -hmm. is pretty, pretty ridiculous if you ask me, because at 25, I didn't even really know what I wanted. Um, <laughs> However, that just shows that the majority of people are willing to stay comfortable and willing to settle. And the ones that choose not to and choose to become that bigger, better person are that very small percent of people that you'll see that'll just rise to the occasion. And that can definitely be for anybody that's watching us right now. Absolutely. There, there is no magic here. Everybody has equal opportunity, no matter what your, what your age, you know, you, you can do it in 30 and 40 and 50. I even saw people do it in 80. You know? yep. So there is really, you know, it's open for everybody. Home business, everybody can do it, but you still need to work on yourself, on your skills and all of that. So I want to ask you, Kate, what are some of the biggest mistakes that you see people make over and over again? You know, some some traps that people fall into that cause them to fail to gain momentum and get results in this industry yeah so i would say two i would i would put i would break it down into two things um that i see consistently and i also have uh, experienced myself so this is not something that i witness and i observe um this is something that i also went through myself when it came to building a business uh the first piece is having expectations without taking effective action would be the first piece. Uh, I consistently would be expecting a different result from the actions that I was taking. And so I had an expectancy of if I shot one video, I would get 10 leads. And when I didn't get those 10 leads, I would get frustrated and I would stop taking action. And right. so take the expectation out of of what you want, right? We did, we just talked about vision and, and bringing it down to your, you know, number one, um, like monetary number you have to hit every day. However, if you're not taking the effective action and you don't understand what you have to do to hit that number every day, then it's not gonna happen. So always reminding yourself that action first will create a result. I can't tell you how long it's gonna take. Um, Vitaly can't tell you. I couldn't, I couldn't predict how long it would take me to have success. However, when you put those blinders on, you don't pay attention to anything else that's going on around you and just focus 100% in on taking action, results will come. It's just inevitable, right? And it may not be perfect in the beginning. You're probably going to make a ton of mistakes. I still make a ton of mistakes now. But knowing that the action comes first, expectation and results will just fall right into place. Uh, and the second piece that I would say that really ties into my first point is consistent action. Yep. So I'll see a lot of people, including myself in the beginning, take a massive amount of action and then take your foot off the gas. And what happens is that the universe, um, the universe is a very accepting, open place, right? And when you commit to taking action, you commit to doing something, the universe is going to give you what you want. 
But if you can continue to start and stop and start and stop, or I'm going to, you know, take a ton of action and then I'm going to take a break for three months, well, you're, you're, you're stopping your momentum. And that's what I noticed happens quite a bit. Instead of consistently just doing something every day or having a consistent routine or after my 90 day blitz, I'm still going to work. Mm -hmm. um, it makes a big difference. And I think for a lot of people, they take action for 30 days, 60 days, 90 days, and might see a few results, but it's, it's creating a business. This is not a hobby. This is a business. And for most people, your bit when you when you close down your business for two months, so does your income and your results are going to decrease as well until you start to automate things. And for a lot of people starting out, you're going to have to grind. You're going to have to work hard every single day. I mean, I, I can't you know lie to you about that. And for a lot of people, it's an expect again, it's an expectation of well, if I work hard for ninety days, I won't have to work hard for the rest of my life. And you just have to be consistent every single day. It's funny that you're talking about grind. I was just listening to Brent Burchard in his Success Accelerator. He was he was talking about to go to the next level of success. Yes, you need to have a desire and clarity what you want. You need to go and learn and study, and then you need to grind. You need to put in the, the and this is the exact word that he was using. You know, and yep. he's like, no, no matter what you achieve, you you you. You think that that now you probably you need to put your 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 pedal you know from the metal you, you don't need to you know put in some some more effort but if you were, really want to go to the next level you have to put in the work and the effort. Hundred yeah. <laughs> percent. Yeah. We're talking about you know results. Uh, you cannot control results. What you control what you can control is your habits. It's it's your actions. Yep. If you work on your habits, if you work on your action, if you work on yourself then the results will, will come, will appear. So we were talking a lot about mindset to this point and it's, it, it's crucial piece. I want to kind of get a little bit more into the nitty gritty of, of building a home business. And um, I want to ask you, you know, why generating your own leads and building your email list is the most important part of building a home business? Sure. So, um let's see how can i put this um if you are not generating your own leads if you are not building your own list you still have a job and i and i'm and i have to be blunt that way because one thing that i think a lot of people see is they start out in a home business and a great thing to do is to start out in a home business and market somebody else's stuff Right, especially yep. when when you're not when you don't have a background. I mean, this is what we did. We learned a skill set on how to uh, drive traffic to generate leads, how to do marketing, and then we marketed somebody else's offer because we didn't have our own offers. We didn't have you know an invention that we had created. Yep. However, what I see a lot is people are marketing other people's offers, but they're they're sending all of their leads and all of their traffic to this particular system or this particular um, you know product or program or company. And what I think a lot of people don't realize is that if that company shuts down or that company changes their comp plan and you choose that you want to move to a different to a different company or a different avenue or whatever you want to do, now you have no control over those leads that you just generated, that you just worked hard at. Okay. So if you want your own business, generating your leads is your own leads is critical because then it's yours. You have ownership over that list. You have the ability to build a relationship with that list and you can do whatever you want and market whatever you want. So that's when it truly becomes your own business. When you are just 100% focused on, okay, I am, you know, Sally and my my company number is CR37 and I send all of my people over to this site that's not created by me and I'm not collecting any leads, then you are doing a job for somebody else. And so in order to be a true entrepreneur, generating your own leads to your own list and then communicating and building a relationship with that list is what truly creates um, a profitable a profitable business for you that creates independence for you. 
Absolutely, absolutely. That's the most important critical part because the, when you write an email and then it lands in, in people's inboxes, you know, that you can you can stay in touch and build relationships, provide value. This is your business, you know. That's why, you know, on, on Facebook building your fan base, it's all great, it's awesome. But ultimately, what you want to do is is bring them back to your home back to your site back to your capture page and, and and generating those leads so that you can stay in touch because nobody buys the first time they see something you know right. nobody is like oh i just saw kate and maybe I, I just need to to buy from her something right now but if if they're going to receive one email another email and see you there and see you on video and then get an email from you hey check out my blog post and a video i made where where i teach you those three little cool tricks that will help you generate leads. They're like, oh, uh, it's interesting. I want to learn that. And they see it again and again. Hey, I wonder what it's like to be a customer of Kate. I, I wonder what it's like to, to work with Kate. You know, that's how it works. That, that's why I need to build your list. And speaking of that, you know, what are some of your, your favorite ways to generate leads online? Sure. So my one of my favorite ways to generate leads is obviously video marketing. Um, I found that video is one of the best ways to connect with a person because online, especially in a home business space, it really is about building relationships. It's about somebody getting to know you and getting to like you and getting to trust you so that when Vitaly was saying, when you're emailing someone and you're constantly connecting with them at some point, they're going to want to know what it's like to invest in one of your products or services or become part of your team with a company that you work with. So video is really great. We use video in two different ways uh, on YouTube and we also use video a lot on Facebook. And those are the two avenues that we choose. Yes, there are. Oh, and our, and our blog, obviously, um, because that's like our hub. That's what um, you know, where I send most people to. So, so that's my favorite way to do it because here's the thing, when it comes to generating leads, if I have two to three minutes to give someone value through my video for them to get to hear me, to get to see me, and you don't have to be shown on screen if you don't want to. There are a lot of people who are uncomfortable with that. There's some great resources that you can use to you know, make stuff fun. But there's something that people visually connect to with regards to video marketing that then when I send them to a capture page, that then sends them to another offer, there's a release of um, skepticism. That's very different than just a plain text ad with an image that then sends them to the same exact capture page. It's almost like warming them up, warming them up to make a decision that they're much more comfortable with. So video marketing for me would be my absolute favorite. So this is not the only way that you generate leads. So you, you post on, on Facebook, you have videos on YouTube, and, yep. and you drive people back to your blog. Obviously, you have a way to generate leads from your blog. Yep. Uh, and you also have some, some capture pages right, set up, and yep. uh, you're driving traffic to those from video only, or you have other ways that you, you generate? No, yeah, and, and the other way that we've been doing a lot of marketing is just through regular Facebook marketing, through paid advertising, um, where we are, where we are just doing plain text ads with an image, sending them over either to a blog post, where like you said, there's ways that um, we can collect leads over on our blog, or we'll send them to a webinar that we're doing, where again, if someone registers for a webinar, they're still becoming a lead for me and becoming part of my list. Uh, yep. The other option would be sending them to an offer from Facebook that then directs them right to a sales page. So a capture page and then a sales page. So it would be YouTube marketing, Facebook video marketing, obviously our blog, and then uh, Facebook pay-per-click advertising where it's not just video, it's also just you know plain simple ads that you can post on Facebook, yep. And what I would say, the one thing I would say is that if you're watching this and you're new, you're going, holy cow, she has so many different methods of getting people, you know, of yeah. generating leads. How do I do this? We started with one strategy and we drove all of our traffic to one capture page, one offer. And it was YouTube marketing for us. It could be, you know, it could be Bing pay-per-click advertising. It could be blogging. It could be whatever you want. Pick one strategy, drive them to one capture page offer and then let somebody else do the work if you don't have your own products or services. Pick one and then start to slowly branch out. Right, right. And and some people, they, they maybe have not generated leads um, before and they're thinking, to, oh, well, 
how what I'm going to give away in the capture page, how I'm going to set up the capture page, what I'm going to, uh, can I give a couple of tips like how to, you know, what to give away so that people become your leads and, and how, how important it is and what are your suggestions for people who are just starting out with that? Yeah. So there's two suggestions and there's two ways that you can go about this. Um, the first thing that we did is, so when you talk about a funnel, okay, a funnel is you're targeting, you know, a, an audience online, an ideal prospect that you want, and you're marketing to them with your traffic. So with whatever strategy you choose, then you're going to send them to a capture page that gives something away, and then they'll potentially see an offer where they have an option to buy. So there's two options. What we did in the beginning is we just focused on traffic and we became a part of a system that already had capture pages and offers created. So I didn't even have to think about what I needed to do in order to create a capture page, create my own offer, what can I give away, um, because sometimes that can be overwhelming. So that can be your first choice. Focus in on marketing and getting good at traffic and just driving everything else to already created capture pages, already created offers, already created email follow-ups. You don't have to worry about any of that. Second option is to set yourself apart a little bit more from the rest is some of the giveaways that um, that I see a lot of people give away, that we give away ourselves, are it's simple, okay? You it, This does not have to be something that takes you hours to create. So say you're great at Facebook marketing. Yep. You can give away a 10-step checklist on what you do every single time you set up a Facebook ad, okay? And then you can target business owners that are looking to market their businesses through Facebook. And you give them your 10-step checklist blueprint on what you do every single time you set up an ad. So it's a teeny tiny little piece of value just to, to give something someone something that they can consume and then implement immediately. You want that giveaway on your capture page, whatever you're giving away, to be something they can consume in five minutes or less. Um, you know, so checklists, uh, free reports, free training video. Um, so think about what you're good at. Think about what you could give value of to someone else and then how you can put it together in an audio. Um, what else? Let me think. Uh, a gear list. So a gear list is video marketing for me. I can put down the top five pieces of equipment that you need in order to create lead generating videos. And all it would be is like a simple PDF with a description of you know, each different piece of equipment that people would need to get started with shooting videos. So there's just little teeny tiny things that you can do to give away to people just to help them, help them get a little bit more from you. And then if you do a good job on the front of what you give away, then the next thing that you offer out a value that, you know, actually costs something, then they're going to be much more apt to invest in your product, in your service, in your program, um, or into your time. Because I'll see a lot of people give away a Facebook checklist. And then what you can offer out is a free coaching call. And that coaching call can be when you get on the phone with them and you ask them what they need. And then you recommend out a service that you have. It could be joining your network marketing team. It could be, you know, a marketing training course that you're an affiliate for. It could be a coaching program that you have. So just thinking very small of what could be something of value that you can give out to people. But if that totally overwhelms you, Join a system that has capture pages created for you, has offers created for you, and does all the work and just focus on the marketing. Yeah, absolutely. Great advice because, you know, it's it's it's, it's going to help you if you're going to have some brand offer, PDF, or video training. Best is video, by the way. If, you, if, you, if people come into your list and they can see on front of camera, they can, you know, hear about your story and you give a lot of value right off the gate, you know, with showering them with your best stuff. That's absolutely going to help you build those relationships with your email list, with your leads, with your subscribers. That is the core of your business, like we were talking about. But if you're like, now I'm just, dude, I'm just starting out a week ago, <laughs> you know, you're expecting me to create three four part video training series about how to generate 85 leads per day doing doing nothing on Facebook. You know, I kind of do this kind of stuff. I need to exactly. I need to start from somewhere. So um, if you are if you have produced some results, then definitely, definitely you need to step in and sometimes you undervalue what you already have, the results you already achieved. 
and you need to look into that and and, and think yeah there, there is value in what i already know what i already have and, and you can you know build on your successes you know just create something generate leads you know how people build something bigger and better once you get more results but you need to start from somewhere and absolutely like you i started uh, you know with leveraging a system in the beginning most of the time and sending traffic back to already created giveaways and offer that somebody else put together that provides value that will help people and you can start like like today doing that and leveraging that until you get some results and guess what like learn how to generate you know 10 leads per day five leads per day using somebody else's offer now you can create your own little video training teaching people how they can easily start generating five leads per day you know um like like what you've done and yeah. uh, i know that you you are talking about uh, miley system pro the system that, that people can use to to generate uh you know the, to, to take advantage and leverage the like they have like 40 plus funnels <laughs> that you can use and it's really designed to to uh you know brand yourself and, and and you can you know you can use their tools to also create your own funnels but you can all you can leverage the ready for you funnels i want to ask yourself you know when, when was the first time that you come across mlsp and 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 why why did you become a member that, back then yeah we actually came across mlsp at a live event it was the first live event i had ever been at been to um that we talked about in the beginning of the story and what we saw was a couple of different things. Um, we actually saw Brian Finale, we saw Norbert speak on stage, and we're just very inspired, and, and it started to click. It started to click on, you know, what's necessary and needed to know is marketing, and how to brand yourself, how to attract people to you um, through attraction marketing, through right. giving out content and value first. And so that all connected with me. It made a lot of sense to me. Um, and then we actually got connected to Michelle and Bill Pesca Salido at that same event. And we knew that they were members of Miley System Pro as well. Um, and it just felt like it had a really strong community feel, but it also had the tools that we really needed to move forward because we were so new, because we didn't have any of our own products or services, and because I wasn't planning on putting out any products and services at that point in time. I just wanted to be an affiliate to provide some extra income for our for our household. And so finding those guys, uh, getting to live events is probably one of the most critical pieces. And that's, that's where we initially found MLSP. I know a lot of other people who find it just on the internet, find it through the tr free trainings that they do, which is really great. Um, but, but that's, that's how it worked for us. Yeah, absolutely. You know, and you, you've you've been able to achieve some incredible results in MLSP. Yeah, you know, you. what what are what were what part MLSP played in in your success online? And while you're telling this, I'm going to grab myself a water. Okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Sure. So, when MLSP, what's really great is what I was talking about before is is finding a marketing strategy that you really like, and then utilizing a system that you already know converts. And that's what we did, is we utilized YouTube, and we, we identified kind of the ideal customer that we wanted to attract um, to Miley System Pro that would be interested in marketing trainings and interested in branding themselves. And, and when we talk about that one offer that we sent people to, we sent them to MLSP. And one thing that's important is understanding when you find marketing, you find marketing that starts to work, where you start to get results, then it's time to what's called scale and do more of that marketing. That's all. Plain and simple is when you find some a strategy that's working for you, now it's time to do more of it, to send it to that same offer and you'll get more results. Mm -hmm. And so once we found that YouTube was working for us, then we, we, we did like YouTube marketing on steroids and mm -hmm. sent it to the same exact offer because we knew that offer was working and that's how our results consistently kept going up and up and up. And the cool thing was is that once we started to get results inside of, MLSP and it can be in any system that you're utilizing or any system that you're currently working with Get results because then what will happen is that system or that company or whoever will give you exposure yeah. And that's one thing that really made a difference for us was it became a very big exposure agent because then we got asked to hop on trainings we got asked to host calls we got asked to speak on stage and 
if you're a home business owner, that's the stuff that's important because the more people you can expose to your message, the more people that you help out and the bigger, um, better person that you become. And so that's what MLSP really did for us is once we got results, then it became an incredibly big exposure agent for us to expose our message to other people on how we could help them. Oh yeah, that that's a big thing, you know, uh, getting your, your award on stage and taking pictures with incredible leaders like going to events like live the dream and, and take pictures with everybody and videos and stuff like that and really really getting results like Katie, Katie saying you know putting putting the blinders on and follow follow the leaders and see what's working and then scaling when you when you see something is working when you see you're generating leads and, and you're getting results with what you're doing doing more of it um so what what, what is like help people understand you know a little bit about MLSP, what it is. I mean, what what is MLSP and what is so special about? I know it's like an affiliate program, a membership site, but what what is for who it is and why why it's so special in your opinion? So for me, um, and you can always look up MLSP and look at you know all the different features that it has with regards to an affiliate system. But I think the one word that I would ex I would explain MLSP as is community. And it's a community of entrepreneurs and business owners that are looking to ex that are looking to attract people to their business. That that MLSP um, really makes it clear that branding yourself, yep. making sure that you're branding you, you're branding your company, that you're taking care of. Like we talked about earlier, ownership of you and of your own business. Is what's critical to them and having a tight-knit community of people that all want to do the same exact thing that are that are creating marketing trainings for you to learn so that you can also brand yourself you can attract more customers more ideal customers to your business is what MLSP is all about is it's about a tight-knit community of business owners that are trying to help each other out to take their businesses to the next level and learn how to really brand themselves through attraction marketing yeah this community is on fire yeah <laughs> and, yeah <laughs> and i can I, I can tell you yes i mean it's not a business opportunity it's helping you uh have more have more uh, you know uh, results in with your business opportunity right. network marketing company home business direct sales high ticket whatever it is that you're having mlsp can help you boost that teach you the skills that you can go and brand yourself generate leads and stuff like that that's what they're all about they're always helping you be on the spotlight and and and, and help you become a, a leader they're kind of grooming leaders and some of the biggest names uh, in the industry came through the systems like kate mcshay for example <laughs> she definitely you know been, been a, a huge part of, of of this community and uh i want to ask you right now let's 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 move to it on a different gear right now uh, i know that you are uh teaching a lot about creating your own funnels sales mm -hmm. funnels, and making autopil autopilot sales you know why it's important to have a sales funnel and how it's even possible to make autopilot sales got it yeah so reason why it's important to have your own sales funnel is because one thing with business is so you can only get so far by doing everything by yourself and and you can only reach so many people by doing things by yourself so one thing i like to think of is you will be compensated by the value that you bring to your marketplace but also by the amount of people that you can expose to your message and so one thing that I've learned is that setting up sales funnels, so setting up a process that you can guide people through that's now automated um, is what's critical. Because then while you're sleeping at night, you are driving Facebook advertising to your capture page, to your offer, and then you've got emails that are already set up um, that are continuing to fire out to all your new leads. So you, what you're doing is you've created a machine that does the work for you that you just have to set up once and you have to just go back and tweak and, and really make sure that it's the strongest of the machine that you can possibly have. So when I think about sales funnels, when I think about online marketing, I think about automation, I think about leverage, and I think about time freedom. 
because what I'll see a lot is I see a lot of people who are doing a lot of active marketing online. So they're, you know, reaching out to people on Facebook or they're consistently calling their leads. And do not get me wrong, that is what it is going to take in order to move you forward in your business initially. However, if you want to expose thousands and thousands and hundreds of thousands of people to your message and to your offers and to your products and services, it will not be possible to do that as a one man show. So creating machines, creating sales funnels like I described earlier yep. is what's going to really allow you to automate and to work on other offers and to work on you know creating more value in order to leverage your time so that you can be as effective as possible, which is going to be in your marketing and going to be in creating new products or marketing somebody else's product and creating multiple funnels, multiple machines that are going to do the work for you. That's the magic of marketing. Really, it, yes. it really Once you learn that, once you learn how to set up those sales funnels and try yeah. to generate leads and build this, build this relationships on autopilot, telling your story, setting up automa autopilot emails and people who read it, consuming it and, and all happens in the background while you are, you know, having lunch with, with your significant other. I mean, that's, right. that's, that's the magic of the internet, but don't get, get us wrong. I mean, it's, it, it takes skills, serious skills to be able to do that. It's not something that you will learn overnight or over a period of weeks. It's, it's, it, it, you, you really need to learn some, you know some copywriting and stuff like that and how to yeah. how to engineer this whole stuff but when once you do that's the kind of thing that can set you up free uh, you know online and uh like kate said you know in the beginning you you need to you know pick up the phone you need to reach out to people you need to do more active marketing because frankly you need to understand your target market you know you need to understand their pains their frustrations what they're struggling with and um, you know you, you cannot just go fresh new online and hide behind my com your computer and just yeah i'm going to set up something people are just going to buy automatically from me it's not going to happen unless you have leverage you have positioning expert positioning you have a powerful story to, to share you have results you know you have all of those things going for you but it's definitely some, the, the place you want to be so that's why i asked kate to to see that no, that's where you ultimately want to be and, and learn the skills. But definitely at the beginning, you know, go in and do more, more active marketing, prospecting and stuff like that too, to have results, to build your business actively, you know? Right. And, uh, you know, I want to ask you like, like right now, are, are you calling your leads or, or, or you just, it's not, it's not something that you're doing today. So it, it's an, that's actually a really interesting question. I, I'm going to give you a couple of different responses because where I'm at right now, um, there's two different things. So I've set up funnels where it's automated, where I don't call my leads anymore. I call my buyers. Um, yeah. And that's a process of, of what I like to do because I like to speak to people that have already made a commitment and, and that I know are serious. So that's where I'm at right now. However, what I'm doing is I'm in the process of creating a new, of, of getting a sales rep that's gonna be doing a lot of the calls for me. So, oh. so again, if you're brand new, don't freak out about this. You don't need this. This is like thinking bigger picture here, okay? But, but what I am doing is I am calling leads and I am calling some of my you know, buyers that, that buy like a $7 product and I'm going through the process right now. And the reason why I'm doing that is because now what I'm going to do is I'm going to write down the script that I utilize. I'm going to perfect the script that I utilize. I'm going to perfect the process that I take my leads through in order to create those sales. So then I can hand it off to someone else who's going to be one of my you know, sales reps that's going to do that for me. So that's a bigger picture element there. But if I were starting over again right now, 100% would be calling every single phone number that I got and I would be calling them within 24 hours because the faster you can get to somebody, the better chance you're going to have of building a relationship before somebody else does. But for me right now, almost all of our, um, all of our communication happens after someone has made some sort of buying decision. An investment decision in themselves yeah that, that's that's awesome that's a great distinction you know uh, understanding the difference between somebody who is just a prospect mm -hmm. and somebody who actually bought something from you and made a commitment to to consume your your product your information whether it's like like for example if you if you can create 
a really great valuable offer and 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 have it for like seven dollars that somebody can take advantage for seven dollars and get it with tremendous value think about how it's going to position you and and when you're going to speak to those people they're like oh my god you know <laughs> you're really calling me so that's future thinking a little bit and and that's where you want to be and and thinking about that uh, but that's cool. I want to ask you, okay, what are some of the, um, you know, ways people can start generating leads like, like this week, you know, some simple yeah. ways. So there's a couple of different ways. Um, if you have a budget, paid advertising is going to be one of the best ways to do it. So I would say, look out, check out some training on Facebook, pay-per-click advertising, because anything where you invest money, um, in order to get ads shown, you're going. There's going to be a much higher chance of you getting faster results. Um, another area, if you don't have a lot of finances, is doing what I was talking about: is networking with people on Facebook, reaching out to them, sending them a message, and starting a relationship to communicate with them. It's going to take you a little bit longer to generate that lead, but what you can do is then, when you're connecting with that person, when you're building a relationship, you're not just pitching them their offer. Your off your offer of what you want, but what you're gonna do is you're gonna send them something of value. So you're gonna send them to a training. You're going to send them to that Facebook checklist that you created. You're going to send them to whatever offer you have that you can exchange an email for on your capture page. Those would be my two recommendations that if you have some finances, get some training first within the next you know 24 to 48 hours on a paid advertising strategy that you wanna do. And then if you don't, then just know it might take a little bit longer. However, start building relationships with people and networking online. That, those would be my two biggest suggestions. But no matter which way you decide to do, make sure that you're offering out something of value to that person that they need that solves a pain or a problem for them that can help them move forward. Yeah, that's such a good point because people a lot of time misunderstand building relationships with people and reaching out on Facebook. They think it's about how can I sell you something? Quick. Right, right. <laughs> and, value first, yeah. always. Yep. You, you need to come from a place of like, here. Here's your here, real human being with real problems and needs. Let, let's build relationships. Let's see, you know, what's life is like for him. Let's let's see what's what's kind of his situation and how how I can help this person and and guide them to a piece of value, preferably yep. that you created. But but you can leverage other other things too. But help them in some way and then follow up with them. Yeah. And I know that uh, one good strategy you are teaching is like you know set up your fan page, fan page, you know put put your picture there, you know a nice picture, preferably with your website, your blog there, and then start creating little videos that that teach something of value, and then you can spend you know five dollars or something like that to to boost the the boost the post a little bit and and five dollars to build your like campaign so people are liking your page you're reaching out to those people building relationships and you're also boosting your your video and and more people see it and then you have uh people exposed to you and then you have a little call to action exactly. out to you on facebook or to drive you back to some capture page that you provide them more you know value in exchange for your email to build your list that's how you can start doing it on a, on a tight budget right yeah exactly and video is one of the most cost effective ways to market on facebook right now um where if you're getting you know one cent views and you're spending five dollars per day you're getting a lot of traction to that video and as long as your video is commanding and you're sending them to a place of value you're going to get some very cheap you know clicks over to your capture page or clicks over to your website or to your blog um, that's going to be and it's also going to give you a ton of exposure too right but yes building that fan base is absolutely critical it's a great thing to get started right now with yep how do you recommend to structure this video what this video should be about is it long is it short and what what people need to say in this video yeah so what i would recommend is on facebook you want your video to be 30 seconds to a minute like very short if you're going to be sending them over to some sort of offer and what i would be doing is i would start with an introduction so say who you are let them know really quick what you're going to be sharing with them inside of this video share why it would be value to them share the tip 
And then if they want to know more, tell them there's a full length training video and it's over on your blog or it's, you know, an, a 90 minute training video where you dig deeper and you send them to a capture page and then you give them a call to action. You tell them what to do. So, for example, it would say, you know, click on the link that's in this post or click on the learn more button that's above my head and it'll take you over to a free training where I cover exactly how to generate, you know, five to ten leads a day on Facebook, um, you know in in as little as preparing for you know doing work for five minutes per day but making sure that's just clear so introduction tell them what they're going to get uh deliver the value explain why it's important to them and then give them a place to go get more information that's the structure that i would utilize to start out with well uh, like a minute video is really like a little teaser i would say it's exactly <laughs> like a little teaser because here's the thing you can put a five minute video on facebook but if you start looking at, um, and if you just Google fan page insights and fan page analytics, it'll help you understand a little bit more about how you can break apart, you know, the responses you're getting from your fans. But if you look at on Facebook, the average view time of a video is 10 seconds to 30 seconds. And so you can upload a whole five minute video and that's fine. You'll have people who will watch it all the way through. However, if you can get someone just teased a little bit, but give them enough value to understand that they want to know more and then save that other long video for your blog or for YouTube or whatever, whatever platform you're utilizing, it's going to make a very big difference um, because this is more of like a little advertisement. It's a little snippet. And then here, value based, definitely upload that video on there. That's fine. You can put a five minute video on there. Just know that if you're going to invest your finances or if you're going to pay money to produce, um, to promote that, that video, you want it to be something that people are going to take action on and take action on as soon as possible. That's, yeah. that's, very, that's a very important piece of advice that uh, I think that, you know, people like you said with Facebook insights, their attention spans is very short. And if you, if you are going to advertise a seven minute video, probably not, People aren't going to watch it through the end and they're not, not going to take action. And you know, right. so we're a little very short attention span. So what you recommend is like having having a blog post with a video there, uh, a piece of value, and then give a little teaser to, to drive people back to to your blog post. It will be yeah. like um, ideally, you know, especially exactly. if you have your blog set up, you know, in the right way. <laughs> yeah, yeah now, exactly. Exactly. Right. Well, now I, I want to like when you advertise on, on Facebook, uh, are you are you targeting fans or are you targeting specific interests with, with your videos? Yeah. So for right now, I am I'm targeting my fans because I ha I've built a fan base. However, when you're first starting out, I would pick, you know, three targets that you can, um, you can target that's inside of your profession, that's inside of your niche, that would be interested in your video and in your message. Um, but essentially, after you get a couple thousand fans, I would start targeting your fans with your message because they made the choice to like your page. So when they see a video from you, when they see an ad from you, when they see a post from you, they were already committed to you to saying yes to liking your page rather than targeting someone who doesn't even know who you are and trying to get their attention um, through your marketing. So when, so create that likes campaign, get, get more people to like your fan page. And then what's great is then that's actually, we talked about email lists, but that's a whole nother list of people that you can essentially market to as well online um, to try to get them over to your blog or over to um, hop on your email list, which is great. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, I know that Facebook doesn't like too much when you like send people from the interest, people that don't know you to a capture page or something. Yeah. What's your insight on that? Yeah. So what we do is when we target people that are outside of our fan base, we're normally sending them to our blog or we're sending them to some sort of webinar training. So some sort of training of value. So if you if you don't have your own webinars yet, if you can if you have a system or if you have a company that does live trainings each week, then you can market those trainings um, and send people to those trainings because that that's what I've noticed is when we target outside uh, people outside of our fan bases, that's what's working the best for us right now. Sending people over to a blog where it's a place of value or sending them to a place where they can register for a live event that they can attend that week. 
Yeah, webinars. The people, webinars are Facebook kind of like webinars, live events. Yeah. They they, they yeah. don't view them as much as a capture page. They they view them as an event. And uh, like in MLSP, you can leverage. Uh, they they have a weekly Wednesday webinar uh, that provides a lot of value. You can actually direct people with your little video back to to the webinar and generate leads in this in this way. It's very. Yeah. very cool. Um, what like. How how did you build fifty two thousand people fans on, on your fan base? I mean, was it all like likes campaigns you were running all the time? Um, yeah. So we just got really good at we got really good at um, at attracting the right kind of people to our fan base, um, mm -hmm. attracting people that would be interested in building a home business, building value, um, building content, um, or building their own content and their own um, authority. In their marketplace and and we we tested out a couple of different ads saw which one was working the best and we put all of our funding into that one likes campaign and so it's just about tweaking or refining those ads and making sure that you're marketing to the right people so a likes campaign is one of the best ways to do it and that's how we got up to about 53,000 fans yep wow it took some time my bet <laughs> it definitely did it, it took time but I will say it's a hundred percent worth it because those are the people who are going to know you. Those are the people who are going to. Um, those are the people who are going to consistently listen to you. And those are going to be people when you throw out an offer are going to be the ones who will be more most apt to invest in that product or service. Now, a lot of things. What's going on right now? People's accounts on Facebook got shut down, uh, like 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 a plague. <laughs> they start advertising. And like, boom! Next thing you know, Facebook like your ad account is shut down. What what can you give like piece of advice? How to prevent it from happening? Like what mistakes people do that cause their accounts to shut down, and what to do to not get their accounts shut down? Yeah. So what I would recommend is is there's a couple of different things. So Facebook is all about their their relationship that and their experience their user experience so Facebook wants their people to be enjoying their time on Facebook so when you're advertising think a little bit about am I just pitching a product or service am I just trying to get somebody over to buy um, am I giving them something of value and normally if you're not sending them to like a blog or a training or something where they can get more information that they want to learn more about um, Facebook's going to frown upon that. And if you're in the network marketing space, I would steer away from words like network marketing or MLM, especially if you're starting out, um, because unfortunately there are some there's there are some companies like in any industry that give names a bad rap. And that's one thing that I have noticed um, before is that Facebook is trying to keep people away from marketing their MLMs and their network marketing companies. So I would stay strictly to value based stuff. Um, I wouldn't say, you know, anything that's hypey, how to make a million dollars in your next 30 days or even how to make, you know, five five thousand dollars in your next 30 days. Everything should be valuable content, valuable training that gives that person that that user experience for why they came on Facebook anyways, which is to socialize, to research and to learn more. So that's what I would say is the most helpful. Yeah, absolutely. And also, you know, don't put like. Like you said, those words, network marketing, MLM, make money online, those hypey little stuff. Also, home business. Home businesses, are you using home business or, or are you not using? You yeah, that, that still works for us. That's okay. Um, and we use customers and we use the words recruit and prospect and those are all fine because that's part of a, a regular business. But um, I would just say if you're new, just start out with giving out a lot more valuable content and training and build that fan base because if you're building that fan base and you can market to those fans, Facebook's cool with that. It's just when you start to outside target people, just play it safe. <laughs> play it safe. Awesome. Mm -hmm. How? What? What are your some some of your best advice? How to convert leads? What, when actually people starting getting leads, how to convert those leads into sales? What are? What can you say about that? Yeah. So I would say the best piece of advice that I can give you when you're first starting out is to get those people on the phone. Mm. So inside of whatever funnel you create, inside of whatever email you have, you try and get them on the phone through a coaching call and through what I like to call a consultation funnel, which is where you are giving them an opportunity to spend some time to talk with you about their business. 
And then what you're going to do is you're going to figure out if they are a fit for what product or service you have. You don't want to just throw out you know, information that's not valuable to them or a product or service that's not valuable to them, but give them your time. And it's basically like being a doctor, right? Listen to what their pains are, what their struggles are, and then recommend out a service to help them feel better and help them get a different result. And so that would be my, I wouldn't even go into anything else. Um, I would say that's the the best way to get started is to get people onto the phone to start building a relationship with you because everything else is going to take a little bit more time, but that is one of the fastest ways that you can create buyers up front. Right. So either somebody got, comes in and you'll give this opportunity immediately for them to fill up a little form and, and schedule an appointment with you or when your follow up emails, basically you can, you can, you know, drive people, to maybe set up a little one-on-one -on -one time with you or reaching out to people on Facebook and in any way possible, get them, get them on the phone and, and help those people, you know, get, get to know your leads, you know, and, and help those people. That's, yeah. that's, that's great. And also, of course, like there are different things like doing webinars and following up and, 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 and creating value and, and those, those will help too in in conversions of course to warm them up but definitely speaking to them on the phone is the fastest way to to convert your leads into sales absolutely i agree with you yeah. now how important is to for for somebody to have a blog uh, online and how would you go about like uh, what's what's important to to be on the blog how to structure it um yeah i mean the the biggest thing i would say is in order to build your presence on a blog effectively is invest in a, invest in blogging courses number one because it's definitely a skill set you'll need um, but what you can do is you just need to identify the pains and struggles that your ideal prospect is having and give them value through the blog so give them little tips and trainings through your blog whether it's just through straight up writing or it's also through a video training and then giving them some offer at the end to to learn more to learn more about you know video marketing which you could have a video marketing product or you could have some sort of giveaway that you can give them um, so blogging is gonna be that's that's a whole nother beast I mean that could be like a two-hour training so All I would right. say definitely okay. in, invest in a blogging course but the other element I would say is just blogging works when you understand your I the people that are coming to your blogs pain giving them solutions to their problems through your blog posts as well as blogging is social and so you want people to want to interact with you you want you don't want your reading to be so highly intellectual that um, you know the nine the 99 percent of people that are coming to your blog have to kind of question and think about what you're talking about you want it to right. be a nice easy read for people yeah conversationally yeah yes exactly yeah, yeah. yeah. engage people yeah yep. I'm probably what you knew, knew about English at school you know <laughs> exactly I would I would say like it's important Important to have to to brand yourself, have your picture there, have your tagline, your branding message. You know who are the people you your target market. You want to help, and you you've done an incredible job with that. Your blog you. looks incredible. Thank you, know, you. You get there, you understand it. You know immediately. Okay, who is K? You know, like in one sentence, uh, who is what is Kate is about? I'm helping business owners and entrepreneurs use the internet to generate more leads and make more sales. It's clear it's to the point it's like boom I'm in the right place so you need to you need to also have this kind of like tagline slogan something that will speak directly to your target market and how you want to be seen how do you want to be known it's important to have you know your picture there it's one part next is is, is your lead magnet this is what you give away it's your how you generate leads because blogs without that you know it's a waste of time you're going to you know create all of this content and videos and drive to it but if you don't have a way effectively to capture those visitors and and, and build your list generate leads with your blog then all of this work is 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 wasted right so it's like if you're going to set up your blog think about your lead magnet what you're going to give away to uh, to get people on your list and um and that's that's i would say and also have your story page right about you 
what you are and, and your story, have a work with me page set up, how people can work with you more directly uh, if you are you know, building home business and some training pages, stuff like that. But blogging designs can, can, can be, you know, um, can vary, but those are some of the most important elements, right? Yes, exactly. Yep, you just nailed it, exactly. Absolutely, awesome. Um, I want to ask you, Kate, how do you win affiliate contests? <laughs> um, I, 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 like, like, give like, like your best piece of advice um, in in two minutes. In two minutes, how how you win? How you win? Because I know that you won quite a few. Um, how do you do that? <laughs> yeah. So, couple of couple of different ways is number one um, when you're consistently putting out value and content over and over again for a long span of time, you create followers. You create people who um, will lis who listen and respect you. So when you put out an, a, an offer or, or product of somebody else's that you recommend, people will invest in it because they, they trust you. Yep. Um, so having a following, if you don't have a following, then that's okay too. Um, but one of the biggest things that you can do is bonuses, offering out something that makes you different. And so offering out, especially if you're first starting out, something where it's you're giving them um, you're giving them your personal time, you're giving them your mentorship and your coaching. You could be giving away products or services that you have. You could give away a live five week training. Right, giving away bonuses is important. The next piece um, is making sure that you're doing something a little bit different than everybody else. So if you invest in the service um, or the product giving people a walkthrough of what it looks like and the reason as to why it's important. Um, anything you can do to give somebody an extra value to make that buying decision um, is gonna be the most critical, but I would say bonuses would be one of the most important parts of how you can set yourself apart from the rest and then actively hustling, especially when you're first starting out, call everybody that you know that could utilize that product or service and try and close them into that, um, into that product or service in order to to really get yourself up there in the top of the affiliates, especially with other people who could just send out an email and potentially, you know, make some sales just that way. You nailed it. You nailed it. That's that's why you know that's the first important piece is building an audience. Like you build a 50, 52,000 people fans on your Facebook that keeps growing. That's part of your audience. Right. You audience, all of those places. You build an audience. You build relationships, and then you have a list so that you. It's been a time that you've been keep kept providing value to those people so they right. know like can trust you so that's a huge part huge part and then bonuses i, I would say should be complimentary I, i've seen people that they gave away 20 different bonuses and it's like too much it's overwhelming you know right. give a couple of them to the point that will complement be complimentary to you yeah. To, to what you're promoting and like you said be different reach out it absolutely I, I agree with you 100 with all, everything you said it's it's cool. great um many people you know kate they're they're just starting out and they may, may be a little bit overwhelmed you know and confused mm -hmm. they never experience results online you know what do you suggest they should focus on first and foremost in the beginning stages you know, maybe the first months, the first two months to, to start getting momentum. Traffic and marketing. So I would focus on number one, identifying the ideal customer that you want to be attracting to your business. And number two, get really good at marketing and really good at traffic, driving traffic to an offer. Um, that's all I would say you would focus on in the beginning is understand the pains and the problems that your ideal customer has figure out where they hang out and market your offers to them. Don't focus on anything else. Let other people do the rest of the job, but but focus in on traffic. That's it. Absolutely. Traffic, getting leads and, and, and um, you know, getting getting leads and then, you know, reaching out to them, emailing yep. and stuff like that. Yeah. Exactly. Yep. Content. Um, Real quick question, Kate. I know it's, it's very, very important. People are dying to know that, <laughs> dying to know that. What is your daily method of operation? What is that you're doing daily, no matter what? Hell, whole, hell bro breaks loose, you're going to do it. <laughs> so in the morning I wake up, um, I work out in some sort of way. I read at least 10 pages of a book. I, so I take my me time first. 
Um, and I then shower and get ready for the day. Those are the three critical components I have right now. Um, and then I'll prioritize the one thing that I need to do throughout that day. And if I don't get it done, then I'm not going to sleep. And just pick one thing. Then what I'll do is I'll start work. I'll create a piece of content or create a piece of training. And I'll either put it on my blog or I'll just post the video on Facebook. And then I send an email to my list. Uh, the next piece I do is I start, I'm, I'm working on product development. So for me, I'm starting to work on some element of my product of a new product that I can put out into the marketplace. And then the last element of my day, um, is communication. So that's when I talk with people on Facebook. That's when I call, um, buyers. That's when I do coaching calls. That's when I do my own mentorship calls with my own, um, mentors. And then the last part of the day is just reflection. So I'll write down in my journal you know, what my numbers were for the day, what went well, what I can do differently. And then I turn my brain off. I turn my brain off from work. And as long as my number one critical thing that I needed to get done for that day was done, then I go to sleep and I start my day over again. So I keep it simple. Yep. <laughs> that is awesome. You, you're doing your, your number one most highest priority before you create content and, and video? Uh, typically, yes. Yeah. So it's something that has to get done. And sometimes that number one priority is creating a piece of content and sending out my email. So it just all depends on what's that like do or die thing that I need to get done for the day. Um, or else I'll continue to keep putting that, you know, off and off and off and off. And before you know it, three weeks have gone by and I haven't completed what I needed to complete. Right, right. So you, you're an early riser? Hmm, I am. I get up around 5.30 or 6, um, sometimes 6.30. But I would say between the 5.30 window and the 6.30 window, typically dependent upon, you know, when I went to bed the night before. But that's, it's, I'm an early riser, yes. <laughs> yeah, me too, me too. That's kind of the hours I wake up. So yeah, kind of wake up and you, you, um, you know, eat a healthy break, breakfast and you, you read something, you, you put like, you meditate, you visualize, you, 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 you know, read some. That's what you do in the first hour, hour and a half of your day? Yep, yep, exactly. That's what I do. And I do, and I try and do it every single day because that's that's what gets me started off on the right track. And I find when I don't do that, then my days aren't as successful. Yeah, absolutely. Day routine is critical. That is, yes. it's absolutely critical. You have to take control of the first part of your day and the last part of your day as well. You know, to to prepare yourself for for tomorrow. That's that's why you are high achiever. That's why you are you are creating the results you're creating because you 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 are disciplined about those kind of things. You know. Exactly. And yep. people need to learn that. Um, I'm curious: are, are you are you using um, the CRM inside inside MLSP? You know, I'm not because I have a different system that I utilize that keeps track of all of my customers and my clients. So that's not something that I know too much about. Although I know it's a really great resource for people who are just starting out. Um, it was not something that we had in the beginning, and I was using like an Excel sheet. And so I'm super excited that they have that for everybody. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, for me, I have a different system that I've already have in place that I've utilized, but I would highly recommend it. Yep. Yeah. It's like when, when you're following up, like we are talking about calling your leads, when you're building relationship, all of this kind of stuff, you can write down your notes in the customer relationship manager. You can schedule tasks, follow up and stuff like that. Instead of taking a shoe box of all of those different business cards or notes you scribbled, you know, make your make, make your head clean and put it in one place so i i love i love the crm tool that they, they've created so. yeah definitely cool and, and they have the the funnelizer right uh like, yep. like for, for to help people create funnels like mm -hmm. we're talking about you are you using the funnelizer um that again is is i already had a process put in place mm -hmm. however if i were brand new i would definitely start out utilizing that especially as, as being a member of the system it's it's one of those other great assets that i know a lot of people are using utilizing to get some great 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 results which is cool yeah absolutely that's part of it. we're going to meet live in a couple of months and yeah. uh, we're going to speak on stage and inspire yep. once once again all of the people in in Miley System Pro, the community community we we're talking about that is on fire. You know, I'm I'm going to be sharing the stage with you. And if you you know if you're looking to to learn how to brand yourself online, how to build your funnels, how to become a leader, then there is no better place to go than than you know become a member of My Miley System Pro. Test it out. You can start with with ten dollars. You know, ten dollars. If if you don't like it, 
then go ahead and buy yourself a coffee at Starbucks, you know. But I, I'm telling you that that uh, it's it's going to change uh, your life. How it's changed my life. Yeah, absolutely it changed uh, Kate's life. That's where I get my first real big results and and momentum online. So this is definitely awesome. I want you to leave this interview, Kate, with with this. You know, what are your thoughts of encouragement would be for people? Who are watching this right now and they're sound to themselves you know Kate is so awesome <laughs> she's like look at her she's she's this beauty she's like everybody watching her video they're they're, they're just just by watching her and, and she's so beautiful and she's so talented she's so skilled you know of course she got results but you know look at me you know I, I don't have so much experience how can I do it so tell them that they can absolutely do it you know that in, you, you, yeah you know, yeah, and then I actually, I'm going to have to run because I have an appointment that I have to get to. Um, but yeah, let me leave you with this. Taking imperfect action is the way to move forward. Um, one thing that I've learned is that the, the harder you try to make everything perfect, the less amount of results that you're going to get. And the longer it's going to take for you to move forward, the longer it's going to take for you to get your products out there and get your message out there. And somebody needs your message today. They don't need the message from me. They don't need it from Vitaly. They need it from you. And they're going to connect with you. And that's one thing that I had learned is that no matter what, every single person, person is special. Every single person is different. And and as long as I took imperfect action as I went through and I just did it and I jumped in feet first, that's that's really what made the difference for me inside of my business. And it's going to be the same thing for you is just hopping in there, making the commitment, making the decision and knowing that somebody needs your message, needs your product and service now. That's what's most critical. And that's what's really helped us get uh, the best results inside of our business. Wow, absolutely incredible. Kate, I cannot thank you enough. It's it's it was an amazing, amazing interview with with so much goodness, awesomeness, so much good stuff, tips, tricks, strategies people can apply today. And really I hope that people listening had a, a mindset shift, you know, like like they are not viewing their business in the same way and they gained more clarity of what they need to focus on and they that they can absolutely do it. I mean you you were you were a second grade teacher, you know, when when you yeah, got started. Exactly. And, and look at you right now. So everybody can do it. Absolutely, everybody can do it. So thank you, thank you very oh, much for all, all your great training that you that you give away. It, it, it's it's awesome. You're welcome. You're welcome. I'm so happy that I could come on and I could help give some value out to your people. And uh, I look forward to everything that you're going to be doing too. Awesome. So goodbye, everybody. Okay. Take care.